Hello and welcome to Business Profit Acceleration Group Coaching, where our motto is just start it. And today we're going to talk about how to crush it in 2023. So the first thing I want to start with is, and we started this, um, we want, what are topics for 2023? What are the things you really need? What education do you need? What clarification? What topics would help you get to the next level? So we talked about marketing. We talked about goals and why. And we're going to go a little deeper on that today. But any other topics you can think of? If you don't think of them now, go ahead and, and email me. For those watching this on, watching YouTube, this on YouTube, you can email me at jim at summitbusinessmarketing.com with topics. And you can you guys can text me, you can email me, call me at any time and make suggestions. And because this is this is about you and your goals. And I'm just here to provide support, education, strategy, brainstorming to get you where you want to go. <laughs> I think how many people, if someone asks you how you're doing, would say, I'm busy or I'm stressed or how many people feel like you're, you're working too hard for the money? Anybody? Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so leverage is going to be a, b- a big consideration. And for those of you who have been here for a while, we've talked about products. Um, like I mentioned earlier, for those of you who don't know Brett, he helps people publish books, write and publish books. So books are, are a great leverage activity. Books are also like a huge credibility business card. You may, you know, maybe you make $20 a book or $25 a book. That's not going to be most people's revenue stream. It's going to be a lead to other products, other services that have bigger, bigger ticket uh, potential. Um, but information products, um, like I've shared with you guys, I'm creating a business plan, information product, a marketing plan, a branding product to corporate culture product. So there's going to be videos and workbooks and examples that people can go through. If they can't afford to work one-to-one with me, they can buy information products. And once, once they're created, I can leverage those and sell them over and over again. So maybe think about what can you do in your business to leverage your time and get, whether it's monthly residual income or product income, and there are, there are systems out there that once you create products like that or books, that you can actually have other people that have similar, similar target market or email lists sell your stuff and make affiliate money. So that's another way to leverage. Obviously, as you grow your business, um, you can get people to help you provide services, and that's team leverage. And then a, a really high level leverage point for business is real estate. So having a commercial space and, and saving money on, on leasing, having tax benefits, potential appreciation, um, increasing the valuation of your business. Those are all leverage points that we can consider or take advantage of in, in 2023. Any comments or questions on any of that? Any ideas? All right, so let's let's go into the goals and why. And I love that Corinne and Deborah met and worked together on their goals. Um, that's something I really support in in the group coaching is getting accountability partners and meeting at least once a month and helping each other, supporting each other, and 
two brains, two or more brains work way better than one. So I'm going to throw out this question. What would be possible if you doubled your income this year? And this would be, this is an interactive question. What would be possible? How about a vacation? That would be possible. Okay. (laughs) And we talked about that. Yes. Before. And I think you wanted to go to Florida. Is that right? No. What me? Oh, the beach. Yeah. I mean, uh, beach in general, but Florida wouldn't be my choice. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't like alligators. (laughs) I, for some reason, I, I, my brain was picturing Florida, uh, but now I remember our conversation. You talked about the beach. So, what would what would be possible in your life? And if if your brain comes up with vacation, so this is attaching a why to your financial goals, because a lot of times people have fear around money or think money is bad. And this could be running in the background. It could be a a subconscious belief that's running. So you want to attach your own why and have things be really exciting. I want to double my income this year. And I'm committed to that. What would be possible for me? I could get a half-time to full-time person helping me with web design, with SEO, with a lot of the administrative uh, maintenance and changes and updates that would make my that would do two things one I would get rid of some of the stuff that I get tired of or I don't really get psyched about because I love I love coaching and strategy and planning and working one-to-one with people I also love business development I love marketing and sales and and I love helping people and so if I, I could get or win I'm moving towards 2xing my revenue. I can get that that team, a team member. I can also pay for more marketing. And I can, you know, grow from where I'm at to 2x this year. And if I take leaps of faith and I I calculated leaps of faith and I really go for it, then I can see living in the house that I want. I could see having the relationship that I want. I can see having the team that I want, the lifestyle and work-life balance that I want. So those are some of the things that come to mind when I think about 2Xing my income. What about you guys? All those things and more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it could could be, could uh, common things are saving more for retirement. Mm-hmm. One thing that comes up for me is it's almost kind of an opposite, but it it creates more freedom, whether it's more freedom to be, do all the things that you love to do than and take away from what the things that you don't want to do. So it creates more freedom, more creativity. um, And I guess ultimately a greater balance. And I like that having people do the things that you don't necessarily either have time to do or don't want to you know yeah and your your guys your guys homework is to take the word freedom take the concept of taking away things that you don't like and having somebody else do them and actually list out what are those things you know what is it that you procrastinate on but you know it's important to do because you don't like doing it everything Awesome. <laughs> so you you need a vice president of everything. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's entirely possible. There are mm-hmm. other designers out there that suck at marketing and business development and leadership for that yeah. matter. And if you take on those roles, um, everything else could be done by your team. We had talked about like, One of my goals is to have an employee by the end of 2023, Yeah, Uh, but I'm really refining that and starting to learn that I need, I really need a partner. I need someone Mm -hmm. who can sort of um, carry equal weight, who is good at things that I'm not good at, like 
marketing. I love that. And so that's, I, I really want to look to bring someone on board. And like just yesterday at our meeting, I got four referrals, like real call them on the phone referrals. I don't know how hot they are. I don't know anything, but what I do know is that's the most I've ever gotten period (laughs) from BNI. Like I was considering leaving BNI. Um, and then that happens and I'm like, okay, I don't know if there's enough of me to go around if all of these referrals actually turn into business, but what a blessing, what a problem to have. Absolutely. And I love how you described your partner. Um, I wrote down synergy, but you use the words. And I think these are, these are really important to repeat that they're good at big things that you're not necessarily good at. Mm -hmm. So like, like marketing, um, and that's, if somebody's good at the same things you're good at, or, or like administrative tasks, those are employees and, you know, a partnership or sharing ownership of the business, a couple of things to consider. One would be just like if you were single and looking for someone to be in a relationship with, you would write down what, what are the characteristics that you want? What are char- characteristics you don't want? So I would do that exercise with your future partner and and it also helps manifest and it helps you with interview questions it helps you with vetting people or where to look or who to ask Um, so so those things come to mind the other thing is i wouldn't give any ownership sharing whether shares or percent ownership until somebody has sustained performance for at least six months Mm. Don't put them on the deed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Karen knows that. So those are some some thoughts. Um, and I would <clears throat> I would encourage you to to continue to be out of your comfort zone with getting too much work. <laughs> That's mean. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's it may sound mean, and I get what you're saying. And I, I, I take it lightly. Um, and like you said, that's the problem we want to create. Uh-huh. And, and what, what happens to people is marketing starts working and then they get too many oh, jobs gosh. and they stop marketing and then the leads stop coming in and it, your business is like a roller coaster rather than you know, going up the mountain to the summit. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm afraid of. And the only way to get through that is to, to have courage and, and be out of your comfort zone. And it's, it's usually out of our comfort zone because we're afraid of disappointing somebody. But there, there are companies out there. I think communication is key and saying, you know, I'd love to work with you. Um, I don't think I can get to this until blank. And if you hire someone and get to it earlier, great. But most people are, they might be disappointed and that's okay. But if you communicate the expectations clearly and they'll get over it, it's okay to have temporary disappointment and have things not perfect for a while while you're building your business. Well, and I can also interject too on the on the flip side of that. When when you say something like, um, "I won't," you know, I probably won't be able to get to you until the middle of next month. You know, all of a sudden it gets their wheels going in that. Well, actually, that could be good because that gives me time to do whatever. So we we only see our we only see our lane, and we don't see. Yeah, true, true. What can what can they do in the meantime to prepare? to make it run smoother and faster when you can get to them. That's really all of a, sudden, a great point. It Karen. looks like you've created an opportunity for them. And that's going to happen to all of us. We're going to get too much business. If we really go for it, like I'm committed to two X in my income this year. You know, I made a, a scary phone call for a big ticket marketing item to market my own business. And I'm 
I'm really clear. Like if you look on this slide, we talked about goals and why, and our homework is to get really specific on the whys. And now actions, if we want new results, we're going to have to take new actions. And usually that means we're going to, we're going to feel like we're in a foreign land where we're going to feel uncomfortable, but it's, it's, I always love working out analogies. Like yesterday I did 200 pushups and hundred sit-ups and the last 25 pushups were not comfortable. <laughs> the last, the last three, like my arms were shaking and I was barely going up, but I did it. Um, so to get, to get new results, we need new actions. And I put courage. We don't want to just be blindly courageous and take action um, fearlessly, but saying, okay, this is the probability. This is the, the likely outcome. This is the cost. This is the potential return. Like really looking at it without overanalyzing it. And sometimes, sometimes we have to take a leap of faith. Um, if there's a, a 200 foot crevasse and it's a five foot jump and you have a, a backpack on and crampons and you're probably not going to make that, <laughs> that leap of faith. But if it's a foot or two feet, you can, you can take a leap of faith, but it's really more of a step and you're in your gut. You might be nervous because it's so deep, but you know you can do it uh -huh. and it's the right thing to do. So I think one of my definitions of suffering is knowing what to do and not doing it. So I, I think leverage, I started 2023 with leverage as, as my word, but for me, it's really courage. Every time I've had fantastic results in my life, it's because I was afraid and I took action anyway. Mm -hmm. And minimizing the time from knowing what to do and doing it will help us get results faster. Mm. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna go deep dive into marketing this year. So I'm not gonna go into everything that that creates excellent marketing but we are going to we're going to spend 2023 becoming marketing experts and so the offer that i i sent out to you in that video was to have a membership with peak business university to go along with this and it's it's a one video one email a week for 52 weeks and it's designed to help you build a million dollar business whether or not you want a million dollar business doesn't matter but we're going to have the tools and knowledge to do that. And in mid, mid January, my encouragement is to just brainstorm marketing activities. So one way to do it is take four or five offline tactics, four or five online tactics, and just start plugging away. Schedule it in your calendar. What do you need to do daily? What do you need to do weekly? What do you need to do monthly? One of my, one of my action items, and I'll share this with you, is to create a giveaway, an irresistible giveaway, um, of 101 marketing tactics. So 101 marketing ideas. And Kate, you're familiar with this because we've been through the whole marketing plan and uh -huh. strategy. Um, so I'm going to turn that into a PDF document that's formatted nicely and get rid of the old ideas and brainstorm some crazy new ideas. So I'll send that out to you guys before our next meeting. Jim, remember, Jim, remember when you asked if I received the, that video? I never got it. It's not even in my trash or anywhere. Okay, I'll send it again. 
Okay, thanks. So who has some, some you, you can have things that you're already doing that you're gonna continue doing or things that you're gonna start doing. You guys need help coming up with five offline and five online? I am meeting with Corey today for social media strategy. Okay, excellent. So there's social media, that would be an online strategy. Uh -huh. Blog, I guess, could be an online strategy. Definitely. That would be one of mine as well. Okay. I'm working That's with I'm uh, a realtor colleague, um, and we're talking about doing like um, some marketing in different areas and creating like a little newsletter uh, together. So working on that, and then also working on some possible online marketing, but with Realtor.com. So looking into that, they've actually okay. Talking to the team, so still getting in more information, but um, poss possibility again. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, and and I, I think you know, time. just doing yeah. at first doing something, um, and doing more is mm -hmm. what it's going to take. And as we go through this year, you're going to learn how to message better, how to target in on your uh, on a narrow dream ideal target market um what's your unique special different better uh how do you how do you communicate that what's a clear call to action we'll go through all that um right now not worrying about it being perfect and just getting out there most of us i would put us in the invisible category with the marketing that we're doing and i'll, I'll include myself in that so Online, some ideas, blogs, social media, ads. So ads could be pay-per-click, could be Facebook, could be YouTube. Videos. Uh, Google happens to own YouTube. So blogging. Local directory listings. Mm. Like Google My Business or Yelp or local.yahoo. There's there's hundreds of lo local directory listings that you can get listed on. And one of those a week. Once you have a Google My Business and Yelp listing, getting five-star reviews from happy customers is helps you move up in the Google three-pack. We talked about video, talked about blogging. So those are... Those are really, really cool ideas. Um, when you write a blog and you post it on your website, you can take that blog, um, embed a, an image. Then you can take the link to that blog and post it on social media. Then you could get on Zoom and hit record and create a video by reading the blog because some people prefer video. You can create backlinks from the video description to your, your blog. And then on your blog, have a H2 title that links back to the video. That gets, that's a like a super Google secret tip that gets it indexed really fast and, and helps with ranking. So that's how you leverage content. Because sometimes sometimes people are like, you know, well, the reality is in order to get really good organic ranking on a website, you need you need a good amount of blogs. It could be 100, 120, 150 blogs. Um, and I'm not saying that to overwhelm you, but that's the value of leveraging blogs over time. So if you do one a week, you know, that's 50 in the first year. And you guys know how fast these years go by. In three years, you'd have 150 and your website would be crushing it. So that's why starting now, just getting some ideas on paper, getting started, you'll get better. If your first video sucks, that's okay. 
my Amherst videos really sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to start somewhere. I I remember uh, watching a webinar with Dean Graziosi, who works now. He works side by side with Tony Robbins, and his videos were horrendous at first. <laughs> but so let's be horrendous. Let's. Uh, <laughs> I like the, I like, like, I don't give a blank what people think. Do I care? Yes. But I want, I want more of a devil may care attitude for myself on putting myself out there. You know, who cares if people think I'm pushy? I have a good heart. I'm good at what I do and I love helping people. So I don't care what people think that have limiting beliefs or, or just like to badmouth people. When we, when we put our neck up, um, you know, we're going to have negative comments. The more visibility we have, I just want to prepare you for that. It's not a bad thing. It's, it's actually, you know, um, it's just part of the game. And if we let mm -hmm. the, us, that stop us, it's a huge shame, not only for us, but for our clients. Like Kate, in your presentation yesterday, seeing the before and after pictures, seeing the lovely homes that you help create for people, like it's, you know, it's the love in the home that's most important, but the environment makes a big difference. Uh -huh. And people work hard for their money. They deserve to live in a nice place. Uh -huh. So, you know, I'm using Kate as an example, but that's the same thing for all of us. You know, Deborah helping people get into their dream homes or if they're if somebody dies and, and they're going through emotional trauma and, and you could be super helpful and supportive and communicative and help them sell their home with not much hassle. That's a huge blessing. And then offline, Deborah, you mentioned a newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, what else? So um, BNI has been mentioned. So chamber mixers, BNI are good off offline meeting one to one with people. Newsletters, postcards, email. How do you get, you just email every single person, you know, like, how do you sort of go about creating an email list? You literally just compile millions of emails. Yeah. And that's, that's where either software or an assistant can be really helpful. Most of us over time collect business cards and you can go through your phone for contacts, you can look at your invoices or intake forms or, or client folders. So there's, let's see. I guess that you, just goes with the don't be scared part. <laughs> you have to just not be scared to reach out to people. Yeah, and there's the, um, the SEC rules. You don't wanna spam people. But it's okay. It's okay to spam people once and ask them to join your your mailing list. So there's there's what's called a CRM, Client Relations Management System, and you're probably familiar with Aweber or Mailchimp or Constant Contact or um, Kajabi or Kartra. There's there's all kinds of different systems, and that's something that we'll talk about in in more detail. But if you want to just leverage the, the business cards that you have, contacts, old clients, leads that, that you might want to follow up with, because maybe, maybe two years ago, they weren't ready. Uh -huh. But if we don't follow up with them, they're going to find somebody else. Uh -huh. So yeah, courage is a really good thing. Uh -huh. And the SEC is, is not worried about people that are 
that have actually met people and you know you're reaching out to them to be legitimately on a mailing list like you know i have this free offer of 101 marketing tips and i'm not going to spam you i'm not going to send too much information but once in a while i'm going to send valuable helpful information on how to be a marketing expert and like that's something i would say and and they give their you know i want to send you this 101 marketing tips get free gift where should I send it? Give me your name and email address and I'll happily send your gift. And that gets, gets them on the automated list with the CRM. Let me write that down as a future topic. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay, great question. And again, it's starting somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you start with a, you start with a spreadsheet. And you copy and paste, you know, let's say you have a spreadsheet with a hundred contacts on it. I wouldn't send more than 25 at a time. Like if okay. you BCC your list, don't send all a hundred at one time. Okay. A list of 500, you know, it, and that, again, this kind of repetitive work and detailed work, it's great to have an assistant mm -hmm. to help you. With. So, but you know, in cracks of time, you can get it done. If you have a list of 125 and you only have time to send one email, you know, you copy and paste into the BCC, you copy and paste the content or an image or, or link or whatever, and just send it out. And ga gathering as much information as possible, I think, um, well, we can talk more more about email content and sequences and stuff like that. That'll be a def definite topic this year. What are some other offline marketing tactics? I know this isn't targeted, but like radio, billboards, flyers, mailers. Those are all offline ideas. I think right now, with COVID hopefully opening up a bit, networking, people are craving networking. They're craving, you know, physical connection. So I think networking is a really good thing to have on our list. When I first moved here from Tahoe, I didn't, I knew one person. <laughs> no, two people, um, my girlfriend and my cousin. And I just typed into Google uh, Folsom Business Networking, and I found a few things, and I just joined them. So there's like Meetup, there's BNI, there's Chamber, there's a lot of different, a lot of different options if you search for them. So who ha who has something new they want to try? I have something new. Great, Brett. Great, Brett. A uh, couple things, but one fairly new I'm focusing on is being a guest on podcasts. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and that may not be uh, great for everyone, but it's you know, good for me, and it's a way to reach a lot of people with fairly little effort because somebody else has the show. Exactly. Uh, the other thing, exactly. The other thing, though, I am doing a couple two things new. I'm exploring some social media tools that use artificial intelligence to rapidly generate content and then schedule them to go out. So there's some powerful tools to do that. And I also just yesterday invested in a video production tool that also uses AI, but it rapidly generates short captivating videos that uh, can be used on Instagram or social media, so. Okay, oh, fantastic. And would you be available to help someone create a video? If any of us wanted videos? If I uh, learn the tool and it works well, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll be glad right. to demonstrate it. Yeah, once keep, I get Keep me posted, because I wanna create some some videos. Like I want to create a homepage video for some in business marketing. Okay. Yeah, it looks looks like a powerful, effective tool. So I'm eager to experiment with it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And for those of you who haven't played with AI, artificial intelligence, it's it's here, it's now. It, if we don't use it, we're going to be left behind. Yep. So I don't know if I have time to go into it today. <clears throat> Anybody interested in, in exploring that a bit? for writing blogs or articles? All of the above. I don't understand. I guess I'd have to explore AI a little bit more because I have no idea how it could work in my business, but I don't want to be left behind. No, none of us do. And and again, new technology, usually I'm not an early adopter, but this isn't being an early adopter. It's It's like the train is here. You know, let's jump on it. Um, and artificial intelligence, I'll give you guys some examples, but let me let me share with you how to how to play with it. <clears throat> First of all, you want to open an account, and you can get it for free if you just say you're you're using it for educational purposes. Um, you get your account at openai.com. Once you've set up an account there, openai.com, then on your phone or your computer, you can go to chat.openai.com. And why don't we why don't we go there? So let's see. Who has a specific question? Let me, let me. Uh... Here, Jim, here's something you're actually further than me already, but what I wanted to do and test was, and I've heard it's really good is say, give it an existing blog post that's yours. Yeah. And then say, generate a uh, Twitter thread using this content or generate a bunch, generate 10 tweets using content from this page <laughs> that's great that's great that? um i'm gonna show you guys what i did yesterday i had a client who is is gonna have a full-time maintenance person in sacramento area and one in the bay area need and they're gonna be working remotely so he was in his coaching agenda form he said you know, how can I best manage um, remote employees? So here's the thread that I came up with, and I'm going to rewrite this. One thing you don't want to do is use AI and then use word for word what they send you. You want to rewrite it because other people are going to be asking the same questions. They're going to post the same information. And if you have duplicate content and you're not first, then Google is going to ignore your content and you're not going to get the, the organic search and indexing that you normally would. So it's really important to reword this, but it's much easier to reword and edit something than to create something from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. So I asked the question, uh, what are some of the best practices for managing re uh, remote employees? And it came up with this. And so then... Um, then I asked a more refining question. How do you know they are doing high quality work? And they came up with these suggestions and the answers you'll see, they come up, um, very within seconds. And then what are some problems with remote employees? And then how does a great leader overcome these problems? 
So that was all produced. I think the key point in what I'm sharing here <clears throat> is that the quality of the questions and the order of questions is what's going to help you get incredible content. But if you ask obvious questions, you're going to get what everybody else gets. Uh -huh. Now, um, there's a guy named Jim Bielgard, who is a BNI director, and he's going to come visit our chapter in Folsom as a guest speaker. And he and I both play guitar and sing. So I was like, I could write a song or let me see if artificial intelligence can write a song. So I, I went to my AI portal and I said, write a song in the key of G about the benefits of being a member of uh, uh, Business Networking International, BNI. And you're gonna be, you're not even gonna believe this. <laughs> so, wow. in the wow. business world, connections are key. Networking is the way to be. But when you join BNI, oh my, you'll see the benefits multiply. So there's four, four verses, no, three verses, a chorus, a bridge, and an outro. And that came within seconds. Holy cow. That's Can you amazing. believe that? I'm sorry. That's kind of scary. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> but do you see what I mean by we're like, if we, I usually spend an hour or more researching and writing articles. And then, and then it, you know, it takes another hour to do a video. And then I post on social and, you know, create links and, do all the meta tags. Um, artificial intelligence is, is actually not only coming up with content, but creating landing pages, web pages, a lot of things. It, yeah, it's scary. But I'm glad that you guys are here now and getting access to it to take advantage of it. And Obviously, like anything else, the more you play with it, the better. And and I again, I would rewrite everything in, in your own voice, in your own words, but it's a huge shortcut. It suddenly makes 150 blog posts seem less daunting. Exactly. Thank you. That's or really social cool. media marketing. Mm -hmm. And like Brett had a fantastic suggestion, right? you know 10 tweets on yeah i love that on interior the benefits of hiring a professional interior designer and then you're you're set for two weeks one tweet a day <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> that's crazy scary <laughs> Any other ideas on what we can use this for? Oh, let's uh let's do some real time so you guys can see. Um what are the benefits of hiring? a professional what are the benefits of hiring a professional interior designer is this is this system this, just plugging this in this is real time it's so crazy. Isn't it? Yes. Like, look at this, Kate. What do you think? I, I can see how it can work in my business. Expertise and like experience. When you in say AI, my mind goes right to um, like robots and like, you know, things driving around my house and stuff like this is 
less scary than that. Like my mind goes to the movie Wally, that Disney Disney movie Wally. Right. So check this out. Why are people afraid of hiring an interior designer? So we're basically getting to marketing objections. Usually time and money, cost, hiring an interior designer can be expensive and some people may be afraid of that. They will not be able to afford it. Fear of losing control. Trust issues. <laughs> and then check this out. <laughs> um, all right, so we have these fears, six, and then a little paragraph with a caveat. And then I'm typing in how to best overcome these fears for prospective clients. And pay special attention to the questions I'm asking and the order I'm asking, because you're going to see something pretty flipping amazing in a second. So social proof, have a re uh, uh, So this is, these are things that they can do and schedule a consultation. So this, see this, how, um, communicate with the designer, get references. Um, like if, if this was my website, I might have either frequently asked questions or a blog that says what to do if you're afraid of hiring an interior designer, but you want great results and boom. The other thing we can do is um, I have never tried this before. Offer. Let's see what happens uh, say, here. Can you say <clears throat> what you told and typed in, Jim? What's that? What's that? Can you say talk? Say what you typed in. Yeah, I typed in what's an irresistible offer for an interior designer. Um, so free consultation, guaranteed satisfaction, special deals or discounts, flexible payment options. <laughs> this is freaking rocks. So cool. Okay, now I get I get kind of. Goofy on this is like, where's this information coming from? It's coming from so all like, over, all over the World Wide Web. I mean, I, I guess my my thing goes to okay. If you use this information, do you ever have to worry about? Um, I don't know. You plagiarized. You, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, well, so far when I've used AI, I've credited. Uh, you know, openai.com with a Oh, link. okay. And okay. and also rewriting it is really important to reduce that risk. And then now check this out. I wanted to show you the, the coup de gras. Um, please write a sales page for. Now a sales page should have attention grabbing headline. What problems do you solve? What's in it for them? And a clear call to action. What Please write a sales page. Now, the so Corinne, there's data out there, but artificial intelligence learns as it goes along. That's why I'm writing a sequence of questions in purposefully. Look at that. So oh, are you are you tired of living in a space that doesn't reflect your personal style or meet your functional needs? 
that's overcoming a problem and relating to your ideal target market. The services, the benefits, when, and overcoming my objections. We understand that hiring an interior designer can be intimidating, which is why we offer a free consultation to offer. <laughs> I, I fancy myself a pretty good copywriter, but this is, this is. Uh, is it is it learning from <clears throat> the question sequencing really matter? Yeah, yes, <clears throat> from my experience. Wow. Kate, Kate, I'll send this uh, my, all to you. And uh, um, my mouth is just hanging open here. <laughs> this is a this is, you know, people to to do work like this, you know, people pay me two or three thousand dollars to do the copywriting, you know, for their websites and stuff like that. I might be able to lower my prices. <laughs> Kate, maybe maybe you just found your partner here. It's called AI. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't need group coaching anymore. See you later. Oh, oh. yes, I do. Don't try to get out of that too. I'm just laughing that you asked you said please. <laughs> I love being polite with robots. I you know, like think I do the it's same thing with so Siri. You. That's what I love about it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Anyway, what do you think? <laughs> My mouth is just hanging open. I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I just came out of the third world country. <laughs>